Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexlex here. I got another Master Duel video for you. So this one's going to be a little bit different, but this is a video idea I had a while ago, and it's actually something we did on stream a little while ago as well. Um, when the newest ban list change came out, uh, we were just kind of talking about the ban list in general on stream, right? And uh, I ended up kind of going through the ban list and talking about each card, like on the ban list, card by card, what I thought of it, if it should stay there, if it could come off, so on and so forth. And... Uh, people on stream actually had a lot more fun with it than I thought. Uh, a lot of the reason I haven't done this idea yet is because I just kind of thought maybe people would find it boring. But um, I had some people in the Discord also saying that they were interested in seeing a video like this. And like I said, I, I actually really like talking about this. So uh, I figured we could go ahead and just talk yeah, a little bit about the ban list today. So uh, let's go over here to standard details. Then we can go over to the forbidden and limited list. Um, and I think we'll just go ahead and just hop right on into it. I'm gonna start with semi-limited cards, uh, and like I said, we're just gonna talk about each card individually, um, and if it could come off the list, and if so, where I think it could come off at. So, I'm not gonna waste any more time, we'll just go ahead and get right into this. Uh, Raigeki, this card could be at three with absolutely no issues whatsoever. Change of Heart, this card could also be at three with absolutely no issues whatsoever. These are two very old and very powerful spell cards, but uh, in today's Yu-Gi-Oh, these are pretty much relegated to side deck slash going second tools, and they don't seem too powerful in either regard. Again, uh, as weird as it might seem, both cards could be at three, would be completely fine. Uh, Anti-Spell Fragrance is at two. There are a number of floodgates on the ban list where they're currently at two, and I feel like they're kind of fine there, but they could probably also go to one. Uh, but either way, they definitely can't be at three. And not even just floodgates, but just uh, kind of cards adjacent to that style of deck. You have to kind of curb that style of deck a little bit more in a best of one format, as we saw in the first season of Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, because, you know, well, if everyone has like three skill drain and three goes in and three rivalry, then, you know, stun is actually just the best deck. So, uh, anti-spell fragrance at two, I think is fine. I don't think it should be at three. I think it could go down to one, but two is, it hasn't caused too many issues, you know, since it's being semi-limited. So, um, I think it's fine where it is. Card of Demise is an interesting, I'm going to kind of say the same thing as far as like what number it should be at, but it's kind of a little bit more interesting than the actual Floodgate cards. And this is kind of what I meant when I said there are other cards like this. So, uh, Card of Demise, while not directly supporting a stun strategy, is pretty much exclusively used in decks like that. Uh, decks that are just trying to set their whole hand, that don't care if they have to discard their whole hand during the end phase, that are mostly just trying to get to those cards that they can set up and sit on for the entirety of the duel. So as far as Card of Demise goes, I, I don't know, this card could probably be at 3 and it would be fine, but it would also, like... It would just make those strategies more consistent, and I, I think the majority of players don't want that. Um, honestly, myself included. It could go to one, that might be a little bit harsh, but I, I, I think two is actually a, a perfectly fine spot. And here's something I'll say about the semi-limited list in general. I know a lot of mostly TCG players are kind of like, semi-limited list is so pointless. Like, if you're not malicious, why, why even semi-limit a card? Uh, and I think there's a lot of merits to putting a card at two. If you want to hamper a deck's consistency, but not outright, um, you know, put a card from three to one or zero, which can often can just straight up kill a deck's consistency, uh, two is a good spot for that. And I think Card of Demise is a card that is pretty good to be at two. This is a card that feels right to me to be at two. Um, it could be at three and that would be fine, maybe a bit annoying. It could be at one, but that would also be a bit harsh. So two ends up being a perfect spot for it. Necroface, this card does need to be at two. If it's at three, it just enables the mills that we saw when the Ashizu cards came out. So, uh, DD Dynamite, this funnily enough needs to be at two specifically in Master Duel because otherwise bots can very easily use it to FTK. Uh, it's not a very consistent FTK, but it's a very easy one, I just think for uh, bot language to learn. Although there have been other bot FTKs, so maybe that's not necessarily true, but uh, either way, I think this card is fine to be at two. It just means that there's an FTK out there that isn't viable. Cyber Angel Ben 10. So this card got limited uh, and came back to two, I think, at some point uh, initially because it was really good in Drytron Herald. Honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of playing against that deck, especially going second. I think it is quite annoying. But uh, that said, um, in the 
idea, with the idea of being objective about this, uh, I think Ben Tidd could come back to three, and it would probably be fine. Uh, Drytron Herald can no longer abuse the coin flip glitch, so they have to go second sometimes now. Uh, and beyond that, you know, they are a very easily disruptable strategy. So, uh, plus, especially now with, like, the advent of kaijus and tributing effects in general, like, the Herald is not the, uh, the towers it used to be. So, uh, yeah, I think that it would be fine for this card to come back to three. Malicious is interesting. Uh, Malicious is kind of the poster child of the semi-limited list, and it probably does need to just stay semi-limited, uh, because if it's at three, then you get an extra body out of it, and that's honestly just too good. This card is not once per turn at all, uh, and that doesn't even include the possibility of recycling all three of your copies, because uh, a lot of decks that play Malicious already recycle the few copies they have. Uh, but, you know, again, this card obviously can't be a one, because it just doesn't do anything. Um, as I talked about before with the TCG, uh, for a long time, Malicious was the only card semi-limited in the TCG. Uh, again, in my opinion, kind of making it the poster child of the semi-limited list, and I think it's perfectly fine to stay here. Emergency Teleport. Um, this is a really interesting one. So this is obviously an extremely powerful card, but if we think about decks in the current format that use this, is there anything besides Punk that really even uses this card? Like, it's really just Punk, and Punk has kind of been an eternal tier 3 deck for a long time. Now, that said, once the Gold Pride archetype release, then Punk releases, rather, uh, then Punk gets a lot better. So, in that regard, you know, Itali is probably a card similar to Card of Demise that is perfect at 2, not because, like, it's, like, malicious where, uh, you know, there's inherent mechanical reason for it to be at 2, uh, but rather, for balancing purposes, again, I just think that 3 would be too many, but 1 is a little bit too harsh, so uh, this is another example of, I think, a perfectly fine card to be at 2. Uh, Trishula Dragon of the Ice Barrier. I initially thought this was at 2 because it stopped hand loops, but you can definitely still hand loop with this card at 2 anyway, so... I don't know if it being at 3 makes that too easy. I don't think it does, though. I remember talking with Chad about this when we did the stream, so I think this card could be at 3 and it would be fine. Uh, Infernity Launcher. I think this is at 2 for... I don't think... Again, there's some cards that I know are on the list for, like, because them being at 2 and not 3 stops an FTK from being possible. I don't think Launcher is the case with that. If it's not the case, I think this card could be at 3 and it's fine. It's been a long time since Infernities were, like, stupid good. Pot of Duality, this is... I pretty much have the exact same opinion about this card as I do uh, Card of Demise. It's really only stun or stun-adjacent strategies that are looking to use a card like this. Um, but it, it just... I don't know. It feels too harsh to put the... This one, actually, I could see being at one a little bit more than Card of Demise because it's it's a little bit uh, easier to use, right? It doesn't commit you to, like, discarding your whole hand. Uh, so this card is actually probably a little bit better in that regard, but... Um, or at least not maybe not better because, obviously, drawing three is really powerful, but... Uh, I think the right word might be that it's um, that it's more generic, right? Like, it's a little bit easier to put this into decks than it is something like Card of Demise. But uh, I still think 2 is a fine number for it. It probably shouldn't be at 3, though. This one I could see going to 1 a little bit more easily than Card of Demise. Mass Change 2, I have no idea why this card is at 2. This was baffling to me. Um, you know, yes, you can generically make Dark Law with a Dark Monster, but Tier Limit, the deck that it was, you know, arguably best to ever do this in... Uh, pass this card up because it was not good enough. So I, I think it's fine. This card can come back to three. Uh, Blaster can easily come back to three. This card has done nothing at two or one. Gamma. Gamma is another card, much like Itali, that I think is fine to be at two for balance reasons, not even for like inherent mechanical reasons, again, like malicious. Um, TCG has it at one. I think that's too harsh. Uh, I don't think this card is that good that it needs to be at one. That said, at the same time, like a lot of these cards, 3 feels like too many. It really does. I think 2 is perfectly fine a number for Gamma to be at. Uh, Orphus Scorpio, are you kidding me? This card hasn't done anything ever. This card could easily be at 3. Uh, Cobalt Sparrow, this is the poster child of why is this card on the list, period. Uh, this card got semi-limited in the first Master Duel ban list, but the funny thing is, as somebody who played Bird Up when this card got semi-limited, you often just only played two copies of this card anyway. Like, this lim semi-limited actually literally did nothing. And the fact that this card is still at two, when Burned Up has done, like, nothing ever... I don't know about it. Okay, that's too harsh. It's not done nothing ever in Master Duel. Uh, even to this day, it is still actually winning and topping tournaments. So, uh, it's a perfectly fine deck, but it's never warranted, I think, 
in my opinion, in Master Duel, uh, really any amount of banlist hits beyond the Barrier Statue, the Storm Winds. So um, this card could easily be at three and to be fine. And I include some Morg in that too. The Link 3 some Morg, totally fine. That card is not uh, an issue, honestly. Trickstar Light Stage, why is this card still on the list? Trickstars haven't been relevant in Master Duel ever. This card could easily be at three. Uh, there can be only one, so this is a fun game. I think that's, it's currently at two, but it should definitely go to one. Uh, I think it is up there with Skill Drain, Rivalry, Gozen. It is on that power level uh, against the right deck, kind of like Rivalry and Gozen are. Uh, this card should be at one. I, I don't know why it's still at two, honestly. Sekka's Light, uh, again, going in the opposite direction of what I said about the last card. I don't know why this card isn't at three. Like, this card, again, got semi-limited in the first Master Duel ban list as a means to hit, like, I think, Adamancipator? But... I think people realized even before this card got semi-limited that the Sekka's Light Adam Emancipator builds wasn't the optimal way to play the deck. Like, you definitely still wanted call buys for maxis and stuff. So, um, yeah, no, this I don't know why this is at 2. This card could easily be at 3. Call buy, oh my goodness. So, call buy, call buy probably still needs to be at 2 because we have Max C. This is actually yet another card that I think is fine to be at 2 for balance reasons. Um, this card can never be at three. It's way too good. Even with Maxi around, this card is way too good to be at three. Uh, TCG has it at one. If Maxi gets banned, I think this card definitely needs to go to one. Maybe even if not zero? I don't know. That's that's a debate for another day. The call by debate. Call by honestly could be its own video. Just talking about, uh, how it's, like, literally the definition of necessary evil, uh, in Master Duel's format. Yeah, it's a very interesting card in that regard, but I, I think... To just kind of briefly summarize it, because Maxi is at three, it's fine to have this card at two. Even with Maxi around, this card is too powerful to have at three. It arguably should be at one anyway, but again, we need tools to fight the bug. So I think for that reason alone, it's fine for this card to be at two. Uh, in a format without Maxi, this card should absolutely be at one, if not zero. But again, I would need to, I would need a whole a separate video to really expand upon all of that. So. That might be another video. Let me know if you would be interested in seeing that. Red Reboot. Oh my goodness. This one's very contentious for a lot of people. Uh, mostly because a lot of people don't like back row decks. So a lot of people, not a lot of people, some people tend to be a little bit more lenient about being like, oh, this card's fine because, uh, you know, back row decks are really annoying. But uh, again, in the realm of trying to stay objective, and I don't even think back row decks are inherently annoying. There is a difference, by the way, between back row and stun decks, like Trap Tricks and Labyrinth versus, like, you know, stun. But anyway... Um, Red Reboot is an insanely powerful card, and honestly, shutting down a whole type of strategy that revolves around, like, a third of the cards in the game is probably not fair or fun, uh, for people on that strategy. Uh, I think this card should be at one. Like, this card could never be at three. I'm kind of baffled it's at two. Um, isn't it banned in both TCG and OCG? We have it at two. Um, I don't necessarily think it needs to be banned. I think in specifically a best of one, it has a place at one. But I do think two is too many, honestly. Um, uh, Sky Striker Mobilize Engage. I'm going to say this about a lot of the Sky Striker cards that we're going to see on the list. And maybe this is a hot take. Maybe I don't respect Sky Striker enough, but... I kind of think every Sky Striker card could come back to three, and it would probably just be fine. I mean, we've already been seeing Kagari, right, creep up from one to two to three, and it was fine. Uh, Widow Anchor crept back up to three. I think it started at two, though. But we've been seeing Sky Striker get more and more and more of its cards back, and it's still, like, not... Like, the best it's ever done in Master Duel, in my opinion, was in Math Mech meta, when it got the, um... Oh, what is the one that lets them OTK? Uh, the new Quick Way spell they got that lets them OTK. Uh, and even then, they were like, they, they made it up to tier 3, they came close to tier 2, but then fell back down to Rogue. So, um, I don't know. I, again, maybe hot take, maybe I don't respect Sky Striker enough, but I think all of their cards, if most of their cards, if not all, could come back to 3, and it, it, it would be fine. They would be fine. Uh, Extra falls in the same realm as Duality and Card of Demise, where I think it's fine at 2. Uh, 3 is probably too many. 1, this card could probably be at 1 and it would be fine, but uh, 2 is also fine. Fusion Destiny, this card could be at 3 and it would be absolutely fine. DPE is not really that good anymore. Uh, I mean, it's still a fine card, but it's it's definitely been power crept. Uh, Shifter, Shifter... I don't know, this is one that's like... We have Cashier right now, right? That's like kind of... This is kind of like the best deck to use Shifter as far as like meta relevance and overall power and not just being like a stun deck that's jamming this card like as far as like relevant strong meta decks go 
it's kind of the best time for Shifter, right? Because Kashira, um, in theory, should play it, but they often don't. And a lot of people are saying, like, oh, you don't play Shifter in Cash right now because it's a Cash meta and it's not good in the mirror. And that's, I, I don't think that's true. I, I don't think we're in a Cash meta at all, by the way. Um, but I think also that it's probably not best to play Shifter and Cash all the same right now because it, even beyond the mirror match, like, there are a lot of decks in the meta that can just play through a shifter anyway, right? Like, yeah, it, it is very annoying for Pearly because then their Pearly can't proc or, uh, you know, gets Labyrinth, they lose their welcomes, they can't use the graveyard effects, but, um, you know, these decks aren't as devastated as, say, like, you know, Tier Limits were, right, by shifter. Tier Limits kind of just can't do anything at all under shifter, but uh, these other decks at least have some amount of plays, and... You know, in the case of Labyrinth, like, arguably, Shifter doesn't even really hurt you that much. Like, yeah, your welcomes will get banished if they hit the graveyard, but that's a relatively compared to the rest of your strategy. Well, in your furniture, too. Um, but you can at least still make plays. Again, uh, this card is not shutting the deck like that down nearly as hard as something like, again, Tier Lament or Ad Emancipator or Dragon Link or something like that. So, um... Anyway, that's I, that's just talking about this card's current position in the meta. As far as whether it should be at 1, 2, or 3, um, I don't know. Again, for power balance reasons, I think it's been fine at 2 in Master Duel. Uh, I think it could be at 3, and that would be fine. Like, I don't think it'd be the end of the world. I don't think it should be at 1. I think that's too... I think that's a bit too harsh, but... Um, oh, I don't know. At the same time, it's, it's so dependent on the meta. This card is so dependent on the meta. Uh, I think 2 is overall, though, for a generalist purpose, a good spot for it to be at. Kukisudor, oh my god, Poster Child, uh, alongside Cobalt Sparrow, of why did this card ever get hit? Yeah, this card, this is at 1. This card used to be at 1, and it's still at 2. When have you seen an Eldritch deck since the release of, like, Runic cards? Uh, for me, it's been, like, maybe once or twice. So, yeah, this card could be at 3, no problem. Fractal could be at 3, no problem, especially with Nimble Beaver. Like, arguably, before Nimble Beaver went to 1... Like, Tri Sprite was actually still good enough that it maybe warranted the Fractal Simi still, possibly, but to be fair, Fractal isn't even, like, nearly as good in Tri Sprite as it was in, like, Tri Zoo, for example. <coughs> Excuse me. I think this card actually did deserve to be at 2 for quite a while, uh, but that time has long since passed, in my opinion. Um, yeah, it should be at 3. There's no reason for it. Uh, Alibur, this is interesting. So with Branded Fusion at 1, there is an argument that Alibur can be at 3 and it would be fine. But at the same time, maybe that does give Branded Espia a little bit too much consistency. Uh, you know, the deck has been, honestly, staying at Tier 2 despite all its hits, which might be an indication that where everything is at for it right now is is fine. Maybe, I'll say this, if, if Branded Opening went to 1... Like, maybe then Alibur could come to three. But I think two of each is honestly better and fine. And Brains and Opening, I'll say the exact same thing. Uh, I think just four copies between Alibur and Opening is a, a sweet spot for it right now. Uh, Long Yan, I, I don't know why this card... I mean, I know why this card went to two. And it did actually matter, I think, a little bit than more people... Like, a lot of people say this was a useless semi. And I don't think it was, like, the most useless semi. But um, this card could be at three. Yeah, it's, it's completely fine to come back to three. Right of our Messier, I actually think this card should still be at 2. Well, here's the thing about the Adventure Package, right? It's definitely at a point where we could get some amount of it back. I'm going to actually say the same thing about Right and Water Enchantress that I did about um, uh, Alibur and Branded Opening just a minute ago. I think that the right balance for Alibur and Branded Opening is 4 copies between the two of them. And I think the same is true of Wright and Water Enchantress. So um, I think it would be best if Water Enchantress came back to two. But you could, I guess, in theory, do one Water Enchantress, three Wright of Armas here. That'd be interesting. But either way, I think that you could have four copies between the two of those cards and it would be fine. So uh, either this card comes to three and Enchantress stays at one or Enchantress comes back to two. I think Enchantress should come back to two. That's my stance on it. Uh, the Runic cards I want to talk about kind of all at once here. Um... I actually think them all getting semi-limited end up being the right call. It is interesting that the uh, the one that destroys, I think? Yes, the one that destroys Flashing Fire is the only one that didn't get semi'd. Um, of all the more, like, relevant ones. So, oh, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, 
yeah, as far as Druidic cards go, I think these are all fine to be at two. You could debatably, if you wanted to play with the numbers, like, I don't know, you could put, like, Slumber to three and Tip to one. I think that would also be fine, but, um, yeah, the deck has been perfectly fine ever since all these cards went to two. So, um, there, there are still somehow people who say Fountain should go to one. I still think that's way too harsh. I think if Fountain goes to one, that is too much. Um, again, these cards all being at two have made the deck... Perfectly fine as is, in my opinion. All right, let's talk about sprites for a second. I promise I'm going to remain objective. Um, I promise I will. So we have Sprite Blue and Sprite Starter each at two, right? Um, I would definitely be fine with Starter going to one if it meant we could have three blue. I think that would be a nice consistency boost for sprite variants, not just, and it wouldn't really do much as far as affecting pure sprite. It'd arguably a bit, be a bit of a nerf to pure sprite because pure sprite absolutely wants to see starter more than blue because obviously blue is really good, but you still need another level two to make it live. Starter is just live by itself. Um, but limiting starter to one and putting blue to three, having the three blue would help sprite variants because sprite variants don't as often want to be too locked by the starter. Uh, and then having the three blue would help the consistency of those variants. And it kind of seems like that's the, the direction Konami wants to go. Now, if they do end up limiting starter, I don't imagine they would give us another blue on the same list. I think they would just limit starter, and I think that would be too harsh. But I would be fine with starter going to one if it meant blue could come back to three. Um, but as far as Sprite's current like balance on the ban list goes... I think the sprite cards themselves are fine. We'll talk about Beaver and Swap Frog when we get there. But I think as far as Blue being at 2, Starter being at 2, uh, and also Jet being at 1, I think that's all fine. Again, I, I hesitate to say that because I just love the deck so much. And I'm like, I want them to be at 3. But <laughs> Again, in the interest of remaining objective, um, I think it's fine for them to be at 2. Two Limit Shiren. This is an interesting one. So I actually like that they kept Shiren at 2 because she is the one that is best used in just generic graveyard decks, right? Like, she's just good for getting a level 4 monster on the body that can also send some cards from your hand and or deck to the graveyard that you want to be there. So, I think it's interesting they kept this one at 2. Um, I don't know, where should I talk about all the tier elements fusers? I guess I could start talking about them now. Um, well, no, we'll talk about it when we get to actually Merle on the ban list, but... As far as Shiren, just isolated, um, I think keeping her at two was smart because, again, she's the most generically useful. She's also the UR, which is probably why she's also a two, but, um, and also probably why she's a UR is because she's the more generically useful one. But um, in any case, I think this card being at two is fine. Uh, starter we already talked about. Fenrir, oh, and that's going to be the end of the semi limited list. Fenrir uh, is the most recent addition, getting pre hit to two. This card should honestly probably just be at one, if not zero. Uh, even, you know, Kashira aside, this card is definitely just like, if Pankratops was at one for as long as it was and is still at one in the TCG, I don't see why this card is not also at one. Honestly, if not zero. Like, I think this card is actually banned in the OCG and I, I, I understand it. <laughs> this card is just a little bit too good in my opinion, so. All right, there we go. That is the semi-limited list. Let's go ahead and rock out the limited list. Uh, Exodia limbs, they obviously all need to be at one because... I, do I need to explain why the limbs need to be at one? Exodia is already, in my opinion, stupid and annoying. <laughs> uh, there's no reason for any of the limbs to be at more than one. Morphine Jar, yes, this needs to be at one because it enables some weird mill decks if it's at three. I don't know if that would still be like too slow in today's meta it honestly might be but like this card can get ash blossom to be fair um but at the same time like there's no reason to take the chance i think this card is fine at one uh feather duster so this is interesting right um i think feather duster is fine at one like we have so many good spell and trap removal but uh there is other spell and trap removal that is actually banned we'll talk about later that that you could make an argument for it to come back, or... I mean, you could also make an argument for Feather Duster to be at 3. Like, the thing is, Feather Duster is better than Raigeki in that regard. Like, I've seen people say, oh, if Raigeki can be at 3, then Feather Duster can be at 3, right? And it's like, mm, kind of? No, not really. Um, because back row removal is just a little bit... It's just different, right? Um, I'm trying to explain how it is different in my head now. Um, but the main thing about it is that... Um, you know, back row strategies, like, 
it's weird. Back row strategies live and die by their back rows more than other decks live and die by the monsters on their board because monsters, especially nowadays, will often like have graveyard effects or be like be able to recur themselves or be recyclable by other card effects a lot more so than spell and trap cards are. Like, you know, it's it's a lot easier for a combo deck to bounce back after a Raigeki than it is for a back row deck to bounce back after a Feather Duster, I guess is what I'm getting at here. So um, it's interesting. I, I, I think that Feather Duster, it would be an interesting experiment to bring it back to two and see how that does, but I don't think one is necessarily a bad number for it either. Uh, card destruction, yeah, much like Morphine Jar, this card needs to be at one for the reasons of if it's at three, mill decks are way too consistent, so, yep. Uh, Monster Reborn, this card honestly could be at three and it would be completely fine. Nobody plays this card at one. Um, Pretty much every archetype has a way of recurring their cards much more efficiently than Monster Reborn does. And taking your opponent's stuff in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! isn't even always that great because it's probably not going to mesh with what your archetype is trying to do. So, um, yeah, much like Regeki and Change of Heart, uh, this is an old power spell that I think could come back to 3 and it'd be totally fine. Uh, oh my god, this is not an old power spell that could come back to 3. This card needs to stay at 1 uh, forever and ever. Rhoda also just needs to be at one forever. There's just too many. There have been there have been too many level four lower warrior targets for it for like like 15 years at this point. Like it's just yeah. Uh, this card is I think an eternal uh, limited list occupant. Rivalry yep, uh, and it goes in and skill drain. I imagine our next well skill drain is uh, rivalry goes in skill drain all totally fine at one. Um, in in a best of one for master duel especially. Like, if these cards are all at three, then stun is just way too consistent and just wins so, so much of the time it goes first and makes stuff like Harpy's Feather Duster a necessary evil. It's kind of like, you know, when all those stun cards, when all the floodgates, all these floodgates were at three, right? It's like how we have the Master Duel tax that involves the Max C cards. Harpy's Feather Duster for those first few seasons was also part of the Master Duel tax, but... Um, yeah, with these cards all being at one, I think the they are fine where they are. Some people should be like, no, ban them, they should go to zero. I d actually disagree with that, which might sound a little bit weird. Um, I think these cards do have a role in the meta. I just think that at three, they, they, they play that role a little bit too much. So, um, yeah, I think it's fine for them to be at one. Uh, no more than that, but also I don't think they need to be at zero either. King of the Swamp. So this is the limit that we all kind of laughed at when it got hit to like quote unquote be a tier limits hit. But I'm finding now that all the other tier stuff is hit that this limit actually ends up mattering. Like I've been trying to make polymerization kind of work in tier limits for a minute now. And I keep finding that my issue is that I can't get to poly consistently enough. And that's because King of the Swamp is at one. So um, I think this actually might have ended up being a good limit in the long run. Uh, it was just that initially, obviously, when tier was, you know, not at full power, obviously, we never had everything at three, but when it was at more power, uh, it was very laughable for this to be at one. But now, it actually kind of makes sense. So, I don't think this is the worst hit in the world, but this card could also probably come back and tier would still be fine. So, Gold Sark, yeah, this card is... Yeah, this card should just be at one. It's foolish, but for banishing stuff, which matters more and more as more stuff comes out, so. Uh, Eradicator, yes, this card got limited when Labyrinth got all their new stuff, and for good reason, this card should absolutely stay at one. Uh, Armageddon Knight. Um, I know this card is at one because it can enable a lot of, like, FTKs and stuff, but, like, I don't know. Isn't this at three in the TCG and or OCG? I think this card could probably come back to three, and it would be fine. Like, I can't think of any FTKs off the top of my head that this being at one prevents. Like, it's not really loopable in that regard. But I think it's at one, again, for consistency's sake, for FTKs and stuff. But I think it could be at three, and it'd be fine. Herald of the Orange Light. Um, this is interesting, right? So this got limited because of tier elements. But now that all the Ashizu cards are gone, except for, you know, two of the shufflers... I think this card could come back to three and it would be fine. Some people who <laughs> still have like, uh, you know, some some bad memories from the first few seasons might be like, no, leave it at one, leave it at one. Uh, otherwise, Drytron can use it. But like, Drytron wasn't doing anything with this card at three, like for a long time before it got limited because of tier limits. Well, because of the Ashizu cards, right? So uh, with, oh, again, only the two shufflers left, this card could come back to three. It would be totally fine. Uh, goes in match, much like Rivalry and Skill Drain, needs to stay at 1. 1 for 1 needs to stay at 1 uh, because it is too... I don't know, like, maybe you could experiment with this card coming back to 2. Like, you'd have to really think about specifically what this enables. 
Um, I don't know. It's it's kind of like Rota though, right? Like how Rota, there it just makes level four warriors like there are just too many good targets for it. It might be true of one for one as well. It's probably safe to just leave this card at one, as opposed to like analyzing the meta every single format and just figuring out what it should be at. Like you'd probably just leave this at one. Yeah. Uh, Swap Frog. Oh boy. So Swap Frog. Swap Frog and totally end up getting hit in place of the um, Ronin, basically. So in the TCG, Ronin Tone got banned, but Swap Frog and Totally Awesome are still legal. I think both at three, actually. Uh, maybe Totally is at one. I don't remember off the top of my head. But in the OCG, they banned Totally, and I, I don't think they limited... Did they limit Swap Frog in, in that format? I'm trying to remember, but... I don't know, I, I think this is actually, I don't often agree with how the TCG does the ban list. I actually have a, a lot of issues with the TCG ban list. Like, I know a lot of people are like, well, Maxi is banned, so it's good. But it's like, there's a lot more nuance to pick apart with it. One thing I do agree with the TCG ban list though is that we should probably just ban Ronin and then the other frog cards can be off the list and it's fine. So uh, that's my stance on that. Uh, even though that would kill the frog engine in sprites, I still think that is how it should probably be. Ronin to zero and then swap and totally can come back. Gateway, oh my god, this card needs to be at one. Yep, Blaze Phoenix for FDK reasons needs to be at one. Hyper Librarian. Um, I don't know, like, this needed to be at 1 for a long time because of Synchro Spam, but like, there's already endless Synchro Spam combos even with this card at 1. I feel like we could experiment with putting it to 2. I feel like, it, I honestly feel like it could probably be at 3 and it'd be fine, but it's one of those instances where I would want to experiment a little bit first before just bringing it straight back to 3. I'd start by bringing this back to 2 and then seeing how it is, but I suspect this card could be at 3 and it would be fine. No, uh, this card should be at zero. Uh, for those who don't know, this is actually literally my least favorite Yu-Gi-Oh card of all time. This card should absolutely just be banned. Uh, Imex Saber Invoker. This card was banned for a long time because it was feared to be too generically good, but maybe like one for one and Rota and other stuff, it can just be at one. Uh, although obviously this being able to summon directly from the deck is a lot more powerful. <laughs> and also being in the extra deck, right? You don't have to draw it. You can just make it with two level threes. Makes it a bit more powerful than Rhoda and one for one in that regard. But at the same time, it's this one's super format dependent. Like right now, there's not really anything broken, like super duper broken you can do with this, but it's just gonna take the right level four Earth Warrior or Beast Warrior, which is a pretty common type and attribute combination and level combination too. Uh, it just takes the right one to come out and this card is broken all over again. So. We'll see. Uh, maybe they'll keep that design balance in mind uh, with the fact that this card is back, but we'll just have to see. Tempest, this card could be at three. I think a lot of the Dragon Rulers could just be at three and they'd be fine. Uh, the other two we'll talk about when we get to them, but this one, yeah, this card could be, this card's done nothing at one. Um, maybe, maybe experiment, bring it back to two first and see, but I suspect, my, like Blaster, this card could be at three and it'd be fine. Blackwing Steam the Cloak. Uh, this card leaves the field, special esteem token, this card is in your graveyard tribute. Yeah, I think this card got banned because of, this was a Halk ban, or not ban, limit, right? I think this card, well this card was banned for a while, right, because of Halk mostly. I think this was, a lot of tuners that are like banned or limited are Halky Fibrax casualties. Um, yeah, this card could probably, I think this card could come back to three and it'd be fine. Like, there's a debate that, you know, because it makes the token when it leaves the field, maybe it's a bit good for linking strategies, but this card doesn't do anything outside of Blackwing at one. I suspect at three it's probably just fine, but maybe I'm wrong, who knows. Uh, Brilliant Fusion, this should probably just stay at one, right? Like. Like, you could argue, like, oh, the engine doesn't really do anything, but I think the engine mostly doesn't do anything because this card is at 1. So, I think we should probably just keep Brilliant Fusion at 1. For those who don't know why this card is at 1, it's because it makes the... By running actual literal Garnet, Garnet being the uh, namesake of that uh, kind of keyword for Yu-Gi-Oh cards, and a Light Monster, you can get a free extra normal summon, which is probably just too generically good. Yeah, this card should probably just stay at 1. Ooh, Terra Top. This one's actually interesting. So this one debatably should still be at one, but at the same time, like, is it really such a bad thing to be able to like make a rank three, you know, in this meta, like in this format, at a stage in Yu-Gi-Oh with something like Terra Top? This is one where I would, I, I think it, it, we could, we could see. I would experiment bringing this card back to two and see how it performs. And if it continues to not really do much, then I think we could 
possibly uh, see about bringing it back to three. I think this card was at one for a long time because of like Phantom Knight shenanigans, right? I know Speedwood players would desperately love for this card to be at three, and that deck obviously isn't problematic at all. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I would experiment. I, I think this card could come back to two, and then we'd see how it goes, right? Omega, um, why is this card at one? I actually have no idea why this card is at one, because I don't think it's because you can loop two of them, right? I think this card could be at three and it'd be fine. Uh, Dryden, maybe a bit of a hot take. Um, I think this card is not only fine at one, but we could even experiment by seeing if it could be at two. Um, I don't know how this card is still banned in other formats. It's like, I think it's totally fine. Like, we've reached a point in Yu-Gi-Oh where like, there are so many better things that you can do than, you know, just like devoting so many extra deck slots to, because a lot of people, not a lot of people, some people make the argument that like, oh, it's too generic. Like you can make any two level fours, you can turn them into a Dryden. And it's like, yeah, but that requires like what, at least, at least two extra deck slots, if not more, if you want more pops, right? So I think if you're devoting multiple extra deck slots to a quick effect targeted destruction off of two level fours, that's fine. Like, yeah, I think this card can come back to two. Well, I don't I don't know. Three might be too much, but I think much like Terra Top, we could experiment with this card coming back to two and just see how it goes, right? Foolish Barrel Goods. Um, I think this card could be at two. Weirdly, I think this card is actually a perfect contender for the semi-limited list. Like, maybe it is too generically good to be at three. Although, was it much of a problem before tier limits is a debate as well. There are a lot of archetypes that really want to make use of this effect, and you could argue that as more spell and trap cards that have graveyard-based effects come out, this card does get, like, too good over time. But I think one is probably too few copies. This card, I think, should be at two uh, for power balance reasons. I think that would be fine. Uh, grass. Oh. Um, a lot of people are like, grass to zero, grass to zero. But I think there is a, like, I think there is an argument that 60-card decks that are enabled specifically by grass are a thing that should be around. I think two was the perfect number for grass. Like, as somebody who does enjoy grass decks, maybe I'm a bit biased, but two felt right as far as, like, balance and also, like, I don't know, I, I don't think this card is good enough to be at one. I'll just say I don't think this card should be limited. I don't think it's that strong. But three was probably too many. At the same time, I am willing to admit that. I think, again, for power, power balance reasons, two was the perfect number for grass. And... That said, I can, I can see why people wanted it at 1, but I don't know. I, I don't disagree with it being at 1, but I think it should be at 2 personally, but that's a situation where maybe I just am not able to remove my own bias enough, so um, that one I'm willing to leave a bit more ambiguous. Uh, Astrograph Sorcerer, whoops. Uh, and I guess Chronograph as well. I don't know enough about Pendulum to know if these cards can come... I think this card could come back, right? I've never seen... No, 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 never, but... I don't see Pendulum decks making as much like use of this one as I do Astrograph. I think Astrograph should probably stay at one, but Chronograph, again, I'm sorry, I just I don't know enough about Pendulum decks, uh, particularly Pendulum Magician, to know specifically about Chronograph Sorcerer, but um, maybe it could come back to two and we'd see how it goes. Uh, Dragonic Diagram, this could debatably come back to two, but I don't know. Tr True Draco is not a deck that I'm a huge fan of, so like. I'm going to be a little bit biased about it and say leave it at one, but you could on, well, no, honestly, like, I'll remove my bias here. You could probably bring this back to two, um, to experiment, and it would probably end up being completely fine. Uh, this is at one for FTK reasons, so yep, it should stay at one. Uh, Trickstar Reincarnation, another Trickstar card where I'm like, why, why is this card at one? <laughs> why, why is this card on the list at all? Uh, I think this card could come back to three and it would be fine. Like, we already have Disturbance Strategy. Like, that's already a thing. So I think it's fine for that to be at one. Uh, this is a Floodgate that is limited for reasons that it's a Floodgate. I think it's fine for it to be at one. Uh, Nimble Beaver. Oh, my boy Nimble Beaver. Um, I think this was a harsh hit, honestly, uh, to put this at one. And it definitely seemed to kind of push this agenda for Sprite. Agenda. <laughs> that seems so dramatic to say, but... Uh, it seems that Konami wants Pure and Tri-Sprite to be less of a thing, but they want Sprite to still be able to support newer strategies that are coming out. Um, which, the latter I definitely agree with. I think it's cool that Sprite can lift up so many archetypes and not completely, like, overtake their identity. Um, but limiting Nimble Beaver to push out Pure and Tri-Sprite was, uh, was a bit harsh. I think this card could have stayed at 3 and it, it would be totally fine, but... 
So are you a skull dread? Um, is this again? Is this at one because you can loop two of them? I, I'm just I'm not sure. This card doesn't really do anything outside of just like stupid long combo decks, but I feel like those combo decks end up recycling this anyway, don't they? I feel like I've seen them do that before. Maybe this card could come back and be at five. Maybe it needs to be at one. I'm just not super sure off the top of my head. Electromite. Uh, this card should stay at one, um, but I think it's fine at one. Like, it's banned in the TCG, and a lot of Pendulum players are like, please give us back Electromite. I think they can have back Electromite. I think that would be fine. There was a crowd of people that was saying that Draco Slayers were too good. Like, like would be way too good in the TCG if Electromite ever came back. And, like, yeah, no. We saw that in Master Duel. They were totally fine with Electromite, so. Uh, Hornet Drones. Much like uh, Engage and other Sky Striker cards, I think this could come back to three and it would probably be fine much like other cards i said before i'd maybe experiment by putting this at two first and seeing how it does but um yeah sky striker just hasn't really pierced the tier three barrier at all it's time in mastery duel debatably it was tier two at some points but um yeah i think this card could come back and it would be fine honestly colossus uh i think colossus is fine at one specifically i do think that thunder dragon being able to jam out multiples of these or like you know another one after the first one is answered is probably too good not just Thunder dragon but just thunder decks in general but at the same time a lot of people just cry for this card to be banned but i, th I think it's been fine in its lifespan in master duel i think one is a perfect number for it Crossout Designator, oh my god. Some people want this card to come back to three. I don't. <laughs> like, I, I think three is kind of ridiculous. Here's the thing, though. If Maxi gets hit, uh, like if it gets banned, which I, I kind of don't think that'll... We'll talk about Maxi when we get there. If Maxi ever gets banned, I think this card could actually come back to three and it would be fine. Because I know it's at three in the TCG and it's not really a problem. But um, just like... <sighs> The thing is, if it's at 3 with Max C around, everybody plays 3 of it. And then you have these stupid chain links where people are cross out, cross, crossing out, cross out. And, like, there's a bit of silliness to it that is a little bit fun. But mostly, I think it's just, yeah. I, 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 I think this card should just be at 1. I think while Max... It's weird to kind of say that, like, oh, Call By should be at 2 while Max C is around. But because of specifically the interaction of crossing out cross out and how stupid chain links get and how much of your deck space is eaten up by cross outs when it's at three while maxi is around i think cross out should be at one but if maxi gets banned then it could come back to three and it would be fine uh vert anaconda oh my god this is a this is one that's a, a little bit controversial with some people some people think this card still needs to get banned but like this card hasn't done anything in forever it just hasn't honestly um DPE has long since been power crept, honestly, and the only place you really see Ver Anaconda anymore is occasionally, not even always, but occasionally in uh, branded decks, right? It's an optional extra deck piece. Now, that's also mostly because we have Red Eyes Dark Dragoon banned, and some people are in the camp of ban Anaconda, bring back Dragoon. Uh, I disagree with that notion, honestly. I'll talk about more, more about Dragoon when, when we get there, but um, I think Anaconda at one is perfectly fine. Zeus at one. I think it's weird. I actually learned recently that the TCG has this card at three. That's really weird to me. I think this card is perfectly fine at one. It's too generic, I think, to be at three. I can't even imagine three Zeus in this meta in particular with, like, Pearly and Cash. But I, that's the format TCG lives in, apparently. I don't know. that. I, I don't really see the TCG audience crying for this card to get limited, which I think is interesting because I, I feel like I would. But maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? I think this card is fine at one, though. I think one is a good number for it. Meow Meow Moo, oh my god. I think this card debatably shouldn't have even gone to one in the first place. Maybe two. But, well, two doesn't really do anything because they only played two. I don't know. It's, it's, been, it's been a hot minute since prank kids have been too good. Um, this card is perfectly fine to come back to three. It's been fine for a long time to come back to three. And I would love to see it come back to three because I love prank kids. I think that deck is so much fun. But yeah, no. Um, for whatever reason, they just don't want it back yet, I guess. <laughs> Isn't it still banned in the TCG? That was absolutely too harsh. I can't believe this card would ever be banned, but... Prosperity! Oh my god. Um, so this card, I think, is right where it needs to be at one copy. It's a shame, because I think Prosperity could have potentially been a cool card design. I like the intention of it to, like 
boost the consistency of decks that need it, but it, it's just, like, it's too generic. Being able to banish three or six is just, like... Here's the thing, right? If it made you banish six every time... Well, here's the thing, though. I have said here's the thing, like, three times in a row. Uh, because of Cashier, that would actually still be too powerful, but I don't know. It... it... It's just weird, right? It's weird how this card specifically boosts Cash Jira, but at the same time, it's probably just too generically good at boosting consistency. I see what they were going for with the design of this card, and I think there is interesting design. Like, there's a, a pot card somewhere between Extravagance and Prosperity that's, I think, where they were going for with Prosperity, but as it's worded as it is now, it's just gotta be at one. It's too good to be at three, or any more than one, honestly. Arguably, maybe it could even be banned, but I, I I don't think it's quite that strong. I think one is a good number for it. <laughs> and <laughs> Flanderies cards. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, I don't... Uh... Here's the thing about Flow, right? I've said a lot before on both streams and on the channel. It's one of my least favorite decks ever to play against, but even I can recognize when a deck is just being bullied. And Flanderies is at that point. M pin could be at three. It would be 100% fine. This card has no reason to be at one, other than that I suspect uh, Konami is punishing it so much because it's a cheap deck that uh, doesn't use a lot of URs, that plays around a maxi very easily, um, that a lot of people will just turn to to get quick levels up and uh, ranks up, so on and so forth. So that's why I think this card is at one. I don't think it needs to be at one. Could be at three, would be totally fine. Map might be a bit of a different... Well, now that we have Terraforming Ban, I think I think OCG actually recently brought Map back to two. I agree with that. Let's bring Map back to two. I think Map could... I'm going to try to stay objective here. Map could probably be at three, and it would be completely fine. But um, I would start with it at two, like the OCG has done. But, I, like, we have the Wind Barrier Statue banned, right? Like, yeah, this card could probably just be at three, and it'd be fine. Enchantress, as I talked about earlier... Uh, I think that this card should come back to two, uh, so the adventure engine gets just a little bit more love. Uh, I think this and right both at three would be way too much. I don't agree with that. But I think having, again, as I said back when I was talking about right of Armis here, having four copies between this and Enchantress I think is fine. So, yeah, Enchantress could come back to two, and I think that'd be fine. Uh, Brain Diffusion recently got put to one. I think that's a good spot for it. Uh, we already talked about the consistency overall when we were talking about Oliver and opening. Uh, branded fusion to one, I, I think ultimately is probably where it needs to be. It, it's just being able to fuse from deck for free is so good. Uh, too good, honestly. Um, and yeah, no, it's not for free. Like, they can only fusion summon for the rest of the turn, right? But for that archetype, it's pretty much free. So one one is a good number for this card. Uh, Sprite Jet, I, I like I talked about with uh, Starter in Blue, right? I think that this card being at one is fine. I th there is an argument that, like, maybe Blue should be at 1 and Jet could be at 3, but, like, I don't know. That'd be weird, honestly. Like, Blue blue is so vital to helping out not just Sprite itself, but also, like, Sprite variants, like, splashing Sprite into other decks. I think this card at 1 is fine. Like, I think it could come back to 2 and that would also be fine, but I think this card being at 1 is also fine. Uh, having this being at 1 was a really interesting hit. I don't think it was necessary. I think this card could have stayed at two, and tier limits would still be just completely fine as they are right now. Um, but I can see why they would want to limit it. Like, they just want to move on from tier limits, and a lot of other players, uh, well, players in general, just kind of feel the same way. I don't know that I necessarily feel that way. Like, I think the tier limits hits have been a little bit harsh. Uh, I'll talk more about the Merly hit when we get to it. I think that hit was actually brilliant, but I think this card could have easily stayed at two, and it would have been fine. Kikolos, it's really interesting. Everyone was like, myself included, was like, oh, Kikolos came in at one and as a super rare because they're just planning on banning it, like in TCG and OCG. And that might have even been Konami's initial plan, but I think with Merly being at zero, this card's completely fine at one. Um, could it even be at three, honestly? Like, no, no, that's probably too good. <laughs> like, I don't know, would it, would it be though? With Tier Limits' current state, would more copies of Kikolos actually really be helpful to them? I, I kind of struggle to see how it would be. Um, it's interesting. It's really interesting the way Tier Limits are hit specifically in Master Duel. But um, with the R as they are now, I think Kikolos is perfectly fine at one. Uh, per the Rhino, also fine at one for balance reasons, I think. Just because not only is it the A, a searcher for Tier Limits, but... The pop ability as well is very relevant. Yeah, I think this card is fine at one. 
Uh, Solia Get One was another really interesting master duel here that I think was pretty good uh, when all the fusions were at two. I think this card could, you could experiment. I think, well, I guess whenever you want to start experimenting, letting up on tier elements, you could start by putting this card to two, I think. Like this card and Havnus to two, I think would be fine overall. Uh, oh my god, Keldo? No. Uh, the Ashizu cards, I think they are perfectly fine where they are now. I would even argue that maybe let's just ban Mudora and Keldo and get it over with. I The Ashizu cards are so gross, and I, and I think a lot of players agree. Um, the Millers are, like, you know, obviously the ones that fuel more graveyard strategies, but the Shufflers are just such gross disruptions in their own right. Like, even at one, these cards are still actually pretty good in a lot of graveyard-based strategies, or... Strategies where they can get discarded easily. So, you could make an argument for these going to zero, but they can never be at more than one. Uh, Magnum Hut and Druid Swarm coming in at one was a great call as well. Uh, these cards are definitely worthy of being limited, and I'm really glad they came in at one, and we didn't have to, like, deal with them being at any more than that, honestly. Like, think about how good these cards have not only been in the past, but still are now, and imagine them at more than one copy. Yeah, this is perfectly fine where they're at. Um, Tier Limits Cash Shira. Is this not the last hit? Oh no, because there's Rate Soth as well. Um, these were some of the pre-hits to, to the latest wave of Cash Shira stuff. I don't see why this card came in at 1. Like, this card could be at 3, and Tier Limits would be completely fine. Uh, Rate Soth, I 100% agree with this pre-limit. This was a very smart pre-limit, because it tanks not tanks completely but it was a huge blow to cash Shira's consistency without outright killing them uh, which was a very smart move in my opinion so yeah this card being at one and getting pre-limited was totally fine all right there is all the limited cards that one actually took a while because there was a lot of nuance in that stuff so let's go ahead and rock through all the banned cards this card this one will probably go a little bit more quickly because i can even see off the bat that there's a lot of stuff i'm just gonna say um, like Cyber Sign, no, this card can't ever come back, it should be at zero, I'm very glad it got banned, and yeah. Cannon Soldier stuff is really interesting, it's all banned in the OCG, but it's also, most of it is legal in the TCG, but Cannon Soldier itself is probably too good, it's too easy to search and summon, uh, and just enables a lot of, like, just gross FTKs. I'm fine with this card being banned, and I'm honestly fine with a lot of cards like it being banned as they are in Master Duel. Even if they don't do anything in the TCG. Graceful Charity, oh my god, no, this card needs to be at zero forever. Pot of Greed, oh my god, no, this card needs to be at zero forever. Ultimate Offering could honestly come back to three, and it would be 100% fine. This card has long since been power crept. Being a trap card that gives you extra normal summons is fine, because, like, this is a turn three card, right? Like, yeah, you can go off with this kind of effect, but not until your third turn. Or, I guess, during your opponent's battle phase, if you really need to. Um, and there, there are some people who are like, this card needs to say banned because of Flanderies. It's like, Flanderies has more than enough normal summons already. Uh, this card, although it's banned, yeah, I think this could come back to three and it would be fine. Last will, no, this card can never come back. Zero forever. Heavy Storm. So when I was talking about Feather Duster and I was like, well, this card could maybe come back or another card could maybe come back. This was the one I was thinking of. Funnily enough, Heavy Storm is actually more powerful than Harpy's Feather Duster because blowing up your own spell and trap cards uh, is already like really relevant and just gets more relevant as time goes on and more cards in the back row that want to be destroyed are printed. I think you could potentially experiment with this card coming back to one, but I honestly think that if you were going to do that, you should bring Feather Duster to two first and keep this card at zero. Uh, again, it's weird how this card destroys all, like, how Dark Hole is, like, you know, worse than Raigeki, but F Heavy Storm, again, weirdly, is actually better than Harpy's Feather Duster. Um, I think this card maybe could be considered to come back to one, but again, before you did that, let's bring Duster to two and see how that does. Uh, Snatch Jewel, no. This card actually, funnily enough, did come back for, like, one format in, like, what, 2010 or 11, 12, something like that? Uh, and it was awful, and gross, and everybody hated it, so, no, this card should be... Well, there is the argument that, like, if Change of Heart is fine, maybe this card is fine, but this card is also way more searchable being an equip spell, and also, um... I don't know, it's just like, let's just keep it at zero, and keep things simple. Just being an equip spell, yeah, it just makes it better, I think. No! Confiscation! This card is way too good, it should be at zero forever. Oh my god, no! This is like <laughs> Confiscation times two! Uh, absolutely not. Now this card is uh, permanently on the uh, ban list. 
Forceful Sentry is a free confiscation. Nope, this card should be at zero forever. Giant Shrewnade is even more broken than Heavy Storm or Harpies for the Duster because bouncing all back row not only means you clear your opponent's stuff, but you also reset your uh, continuous spell and trap cards that are soft once it returns. Uh, this card got banned forever ago and just needs to be banned forever. Painful Choice, I'm like, God, this is arguably the most broken card on the ban list. This card could absolutely never come back. Zero forever. Cyber Jar, I think, is mostly banned because of the same concerns of Morphing Jar being at 1, because it enables some mill strategies. But if Morphing Jar is fine at 1, I think this card is also probably just fine at 1. Um, I think we could experiment with it coming back at 1, and I think it would be okay. Uh, no. This card was legal when Master Duel first came out, and I have no idea why. Even with the errata, this card is gross, stupid, and should be at 0 forever. Premature Burial, um, much like Snatch Steel, this card is actually way better. This card is actually way better than Monster Reborn for a lot of reasons, but mostly because if you bounce the Premature Burial, the monster stays on the field. Like, it doesn't go back to the graveyard, and you can just reuse this. And again, much like Snatch Steel, being in a Corpse Spell makes it a lot more searchable, so this card is zero forever. Time Seal could honestly probably come back to three, and it would be fine. I don't think there's any kind of FTKs or loops you can do with it. If Yada is fine at 3, this card is also fine at 3. Card of Safe Return, absolutely not. This card could never come back uh, as is. Uh, and I think an errata to make this hard once per turn would be super pointless, and this card would just be awful. So, like, nah, it's weird. Maybe if it had a hard twice per turn, that'd be, like, kind of interesting. But uh, as is, as it is with this text, this card could never come back. Cold Wave can never come back. This card is a permanent zero. Uh, Amazonas Archer, I think of the Cannon Soldier stuff, this one is like the most fine because you have to tribute two monsters, but again, I'm like, my whole thing is like, why even allow it? Like, why even have the opportunity for it? I think it's fine to keep this card at zero forever. Fire Jar, I think this card should actually be at zero, not because it's OP, because it's annoying. And a lot of people who are like, oh, all it does is restart the game, it's cute, bring it back. You've clearly never been to Fire Jar. I've had to play while this card is legal, it's so fucking annoying this is such an annoying card to resolve and when it happens multiple times in a duel it's just so ground inducing uh no this card needs to be at zero forever honestly yada is actually uh according to a recent leak about to come back and i think much like time seal uh this card can come back to three and it would be completely fine uh, if your opponent, if you're in a spot where you're able to normal summon this and attack directly while your opponent has no cards in hand or field, you're probably just going to win the duel anyway, like in this day and age. So, I mean, yeah, no, I think this card is fine. I come back at three. Smoke Grenade uh, got banned relatively recently, and I think that's perfectly fine. Um, even though I have two royal copies that are now just in jail forever, can't didn't even get refunds for them because they're legacy cards. Um, <laughs> I think it's still fine for this card to be at zero. Uh, Royal Oppression absolutely needs to be at zero forever. Last turn needs to be at zero forever. Not even for power reasons, but just for complication reasons. Mirage of Nightmare, zero forever. Trap does shoot, zero forever. Uh, Can Soldier, again, I think it's fine for these cards to be at zero. Uh, Terraforming, this one's interesting. I think this card could come back to one and it would be fine. I understand why it could only ban this though. Like, Generic Field Spell Search has probably hit a point where it's probably just too good. But at the same time, like, it's just still not good enough that I think it's fine at one. I don't know, it's interesting. I, I think this could come back to one, but I'm not sad that it's banned. Let me put it that way. Metamorphosis, um... I think this card could come back to one, right? I've thought about this card before. I don't think there's anything really ridiculous you could do with this. Like, I think a lot of extra deck fusion monsters, like, you could cheat out. Like, with stuff like Cybersign, like... This is obviously, tripping a monster at the same level is obviously more difficult than paying 5,000 life points. Also, this card isn't searchable like or like revivable like Stein was. So, I think this card can come back to one. We'd see how it does. I think it'd probably be fine. Uh, no, never. This card is a permanent zero. Uh, Mass Driver, I think is a permanent zero, even more so than Cannon Soldier, because this one doesn't take your normal summon. But if I dagger Elma, no, it just loops too easily permanent zero dimension fusion god no permanent zero self-destruct button um way more annoying than even fibro jar even more than one day of peace this might actually be my least favorite card in Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, this card is ridiculous and stupid and annoying permanent zero six cents permanent zero i don't know why this card is legal in the tcg when it got printed here but nope permanent zero return from a different dimension permanent zero magical explosion ftk tool permanent zero Divine Sword to Phoenix Blade. Um, arguably, if you ban Isold, this can come back, but maybe you should just ban Isold anyway. I don't know. Um, 
How do I feel about this card? I mean, if Isold gets banned, I feel like maybe there's just another strategy somewhere down the line that abuses this too easily. Like, this card was technically abusable before Isold came out as well. It's a weird card. I don't know. If Isold gets banned, it could come to one, and we would see how it does. I'll say that. Silva, uh, this card getting banned ended up being a pretty good call because of the um, yeah hand loops and stuff that Dark World can potentially do. Yeah, zero is fine. Ah, oh, Dandelion. I love this card. This is one of my favorite Yu-Gi-Oh cards ever, but like, with Link Monsters being a thing, this card is absolutely way too good. This card could never come back. I love you, Dandy, but permanent zero. Life Equalizer. This card is just stupid FTK tool. Permanent zero. Wind Barrier Statue. Yeah. Uh, this card, I think, should just stay at zero because of Flu and um, the Samoa Link 3. I don't think hitting those decks enough Arguably, okay, so let's talk about the barrier statues. Should they all just be at zero? I know I said for a while that they didn't need to be, but maybe they should just be because how, like, it's just gonna, like, I don't know. I feel like somewhere down the line, another deck is gonna come along that can use another one of the barrier statues, like Flu did the wind one. I don't know. Maybe we should just put them all to zero. Uh, it's Diffusion. This one's interesting. I think it's a lot like Terraforming, where you can make an argument that this card is fine at one, but I think it should also probably just be at zero. Um, because much like, you know, being able to generically search a field spell is a little bit too good, maybe. Uh, I think being able to just pop out a level 5 lower fusion monster is also probably just too good. Um, especially as more and more good ones keep getting printed, right? So. Grinder Golem. Um, yeah, this card needs to stay at zero, because... I don't know if it would still enable FTKs, but it would definitely be a really, really good link tool. Like... Yeah, you, like, it's kind of weird. It's like a reverse kaiju. Like, you give your opponent the body, but instead of taking away their bodies, you get to. So, maybe it's still too good in that regard. I'm, I'm sure it is. Should probably just be at zero. Cannon Soldiers, again, I'm fine with them being at zero. Substitute, yes, not once per turn, not once per turn. Can just cycle through your whole deck. No, this card needs to be at zero. My Master, similarly, cost life points, but not once per turn. Needs to be at zero. Tempest Magician, FTK tool, fine at zero. Uh, Amaryllis, FTK tool, fine at zero. Fishboard Blaster, not once per turn, too loopable, fine at zero. Level Eater, not once per turn, too loopable, fine at zero. Jin, Releaser of Rituals, uh, disgustingly good. And that was even before, like, we kept getting more and more good ritual stuff. Like, no, yeah, this card... God, could you imagine Herald with this card being legal? No. Permanent zero. Tyrant Neptune, uh, FTK tool needs to be at zero, probably. I don't know if the FTK is still viable, but I'm sure you could find another one. Globe Bulb is a victim of Halky Fibrax that I think this card could come back to one. It's a once per jewel effect, and I think being able to get a once per jewel extra level one tuner is probably fine. Uh, and it would also boost certain graveyard based synchro strategies. Granted, I am very biased towards those, I like those a lot. But I think this card could come back to one with Halk Band, and it would be fine. Uh, no, this card was legal at the start of Master Duel, and it was gross even at one. Permanent zero. Uh, wind Up Hunter, with uh, Zen Matey having come back, I think this card does just need to stay at zero. Yeah. Laval Chain, no, 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 no. Generic rank four that can foolish any card in your deck? No, 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 no. Zero. Permanent zero. Shockmaster, um... As much as <laughs> Rorkos does love this card, I think no permanent zero. Uh, Eclipse Wyvern. God, could you imagine Dragon Link with this card? No, permanent zero. Redox. So of the Dragon Rulers, I think this is the one that is probably the most likely to stay banned. And I think we could experiment with this card at one. But the Reborn effect is really, really good. Um, and a lot of Earth decks still really want it. Let's, I think we could experiment with it at one, but I could also honestly see a world where this card needs to stay banned. This is the hardest Dragon Ruler for me to evaluate. Like, it would just, you would need to experiment with this one. Blaster and Tempest, I've proven they could be fine at three. This one, I think, would need more. Again, just experimentation. Tidal is kind of similar. Like, Water Decks being able to Foolish is pretty good, but it's, I don't know if it's that good, because you need this and another Water Monster to discard. This card could come back to one, I think easily would be fine. Could debatably come back to three would be fine. You would want to experiment with it though, I think. Uh, God, no, 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 God. If you've never had to play with this card, you're a very lucky person. Soul Charge, permanent zero, too strong. 
Uh, Norden, yeah, it's probably just a permanent zero. It's just too strong. Like, even with its diffusion band, like, no, we'll just keep it at zero. <laughs> Rongo Minad. There was a day, there was a point in time where I argued this card was fine, but it's, I don't know, it, it, it's a little gross. It should probably just stay banned forever, honestly. Um, as a thought, no, zero forever. Um, God, again, could you imagine Dragon Link being able to send multiple dragons as a cost? No, this card needs to be at zero forever. Uh, Tolmies, alongside Yadagrasu, is actually coming back soon. I'm baffled this card has been banned as long as it has. Like, if you're using three level four monsters to make Cyber Dragon Infendi in this day and age, like, you're wasting resources. There are so many better things you could be doing. Uh, and bringing this card back would be a huge boost to Teller Knight decks. Uh, and they're also getting new support too. So, this card coming back to three, uh, completely fine. Uh, and, and I'm in support of it. This card, no, 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 no. So if you think Numeron, <laughs> like if you think Numeron sucks as a going second deck, imagine if they had going first plays, and imagine if those going first plays was, was making it so that you could not activate cards or effects. That's what this card is. Permanent zero. Utopic Zexel is disgusting. Permanent zero forever. Plush fire. Um. Yeah, this card probably just needs to stay at zero. Like, it's because it, it it can pop off its like off your own card effects that destroy it. Like, and it'll summon from deck. Yeah, this card is just too good. Kirin, a lot of people have been wanting this card to come back, and I agree. Like, it could come back. I think Pendulum's having a bounce CPE is fine. It's funny that Magic Specters get support that like supports this card uh, in a newer set recently, and this card's still banned in the OCG. I think it come back to one, it would be fine. Monkey Board uh, could come back to one and it would be fine. Like, it's a good searcher, but Pendulums have a lot of tools and are also just, you know, worse than when Monkey Board got banned. So, yeah. Um, stupid FTK tool. Very glad this got banned. Uh, this is an FTK tool. Keep it at zero. Gofu the Vague Shadow. Um, Yeah, this card probably... I think this card probably just needs to stay banned. Like, it's just a free special summon that gives you three link materials. Like, yeah, this card should probably just be at zero. <laughs> oh, Block Dragon. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I think this card only needed to go to zero because of the super heavy samurai stuff coming out. I think that aside, this card was fine at one. I think Ad Emancipator was fine, perfectly fine as a deck the entirety of the time this card was at one. Might be a bit of a hot take to some people, but that's just how I feel about it. Totally awesome. Uh, we talked about earlier when we talked about the Swap Frog. If Ronatone gets banned, uh, this card can absolutely come back and it would be fine. Doesn't Hero Celestial end up being a really smart hit to the DPE engine? Um, I think it could come back and the DPE engine would be fine, but at the same time, it's like, why why bring it back? Like, All it does is add a draw to, to decks that would just generically use that engine anyway. Um, it wouldn't even be that much of a boost to Hero's power level, honestly. Um, not any more so than any other deck that would play DPE. So, you, I don't know. Maybe you, you could come back at 1, it would be fine. But I'm not sad for it to be at 0, either. Uh, no. Permanent 0. No. Permanent 0. No. Permanent 0. Glad we talked about that. Alright. Um, honestly, also, no. Permanent 0. Um, I'm really, really glad this card got a hit. I think it should stay at 0. Uh, this card... I don't know why this card's at zero. I'm sure it's because of some specific strategy, but I think it'd be fine. I think we could experiment with this card coming back to one, it would probably be fine. No. <laughs> no. Um, okay. I will say, not about this one, I will say about Halk. I'm a Halk lover. I think Halk is a really cool card in what it enabled as far as like strategies go. Um, it's just that those strategies that are cool were also too powerful. So, uh, as much as I actually like this card, no, needs to be at zero. Uh, no, absolutely needs to be at zero forever. Um, oh my god, the Nightmare Link ones, and Link, or not Link ones, well, just the other Nightmare Links, the Goblin and Mermaid. These cards are way too good. I'm very glad I never had to play with them. Um, yeah, zero forever. Gumblar, god knows, zero forever. God Dragon LP, god knows, zero forever. This one also is zero forever. Um, yep, zero forever. This card is just way too good. Uh, just being able to be like a generic search yeah it's just too good no god no i'm so glad i've never had to play against this card mind is zero forever uh union carrier was a great hit um yeah i think this card is fine to be at zero forever 
Um, Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. A lot of people want to see this card come back, and it totally baffles me. I have no idea why people like this card. I think it's just because it means they get to play Dark Magician. This card is gross and stupid, and I think it's totally fine to be at zero forever. And I would rather have Ver Anaconda at one and this at zero than the other way around. Easily. Link Cross. No, card's way too good. Zero forever. Uh, Tier Limits Murley was a very, very smart ban when it comes to the Tier Limits hits. Um, I don't think a lot of us saw this coming, that the hit was going to be as impactful as it was, but not only is having one less Fuser name, like, hugely detrimental to Tier Limits strategy, but this was absolutely the one to hit because of its interactions with Sprint and Elf. And, I've said this before, and I'll say this again here too, um, a lot of people say Sprite Elf is too generically strong, I disagree with that. I think people only think that because Tier Limits used it to bring back Murley, but with Murley banned, um, there are like almost no non-sprite decks that consistently make use of Elf. Uh, there are some decks that play it, but again, I say consistently. Um, I've said this before and I'll say it again. If you look at Master Duel meta and look at decks that play sprite Elf, after you get past all the sprite variants, the next, the decks that play Elf the next, the most after that are like Ninja and Labyrinth. And when is the last time you've seen either of those decks summon Elf? I've never seen either summon Elf, so... Um, I think Elf is fine. I know Elf is not on the list, but I'm going to talk about it for a second here anyway. I think Elf is currently fine as it is. I think maybe it could go to 1, and I would see that being justified, but... Um, this card, anyway, this card being at 0 actually is very, very smart, and I think it was the right call. Um, yeah, this card absolutely needed to get banned. It was really stupid. <laughs> Uh, and then, yeah, the Ashizu cards are the last two. Rest in pieces, oh my god, I think we can all agree with this. These cards are way too strong. And as I said with the Shufflers, those should debatably be banned as well. So, whew, I did not expect to uh, sit down and do a one-hour video all in one go. But there we have it. That is my thoughts on the current Master Duel. Every card currently on the Master Duel ban list. Now, of course, there is a whole other argument to be made for cards that are not on the list that should be. But that would, of course, be its own entire video. So, um, if you watch the entire hour-plus video, thank you very, very much. Oh my god, that's insane if you did. Um, I super-duper appreciate that. And, yeah, if you want to see more content like this, where we just kind of talk more generally about the game, as opposed to a more specific deck, uh, I'd be down for it. Just let me know if you have anything specific you want to see in the comment section below. But, uh, that's going to do it for this vid. Let's move now to our outro. Alright everybody, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching it all the way to the very end. That means a whole lot to me, and it's also a fantastic way to support the channel. And if you're interested in supporting the channel in other ways besides YouTube, there are plenty of ways to do that. If you check out the description below, you'll find a bunch of links down there. One of them goes to my Patreon. You're actually seeing the names of everyone subscribed to the Patreon on the screen right now. So, if you're interested in getting your name in the credits here at the end, if you want to see more daily Master Duel content, or if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one private coaching sessions, I offer all of that on Patreon. I also stream live on Twitch. Feel free to go ahead and click that link and follow and or subscribe there. I also have the Discord community if you want to follow that link where hundreds of duelists have already signed up. Free to join and you can just come hang out, talk about the game, and chill in general. The final link that's going to be in the description is my Twitter. You can follow that if you want some more notifications of what's happening with the channel. So all in all, thank you all so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.